Hello everyone, I am Dr. Shiv Kumar, Assistant Professor of Physics. So in this video session, I will be talking about the important concepts of conservation of linear momentum unit. So this particular chapter is prescribed for first semester students of Mysore University. So the topic of the session uh, is the rocket motion in a uniform gravitational field. In that, you are going to, we are going to derive the single stage rocket equation with and without gravity. The important learning objectives of the session are to understand the motion of a rocket in a uniform gravitational field and then to derive the single stage rocket equation with and without gravity. The single stage rocket works on the principle of Newton's third law of motion and the conservation of linear momentum. So now first let us look at how it works based on Newton's third law of motion. So for third law to be applicable, we require action and reaction. In a single stage racket or in any racket for that matter, when the fuel burns, a jet of hot gases emerges forcefully from the tail of the rocket. This serves as the action. And the force exerted by the jet of hot gases on the rocket serves as the reaction. So therefore, under the action and reaction, the rocket moves in the upward direction. The same thing can be explained using the law of conservation of momentum as well. When the hot gases are exhausted from the tail of the rocket, the jet of hot gases carry momentum in the downward direction. Similarly, the rocket carries momentum in the upward direction. So the total momentum of the system of the jet of hot gases and the rocket remain conserved. So now let us try to derive a single stage rocket equation without gravity. The schematic diagram of a single stage rocket generally represented like this as shown in the figure. Now consider a rocket a single stage rocket moving along a straight line far away from the gravitational force of the earth. Since we are deriving the rocket equation without gravity, let us consider the rocket is moving in the absence of gravitational force of the earth. Let m and v be mass and velocities of the rocket with respect to ground at any instant of time. Let v0 and v' dash be the velocities of exhaust gases with respect to the rocket and with respect to ground respectively. So then the velocity of gases relative to ground can be written as velocity of rocket with respect to ground plus velocity of gases relative to rocket. Conventionally the upward direction is taken to be positive and downward direction is taken to be negative. So therefore velocity of gases relative to ground is negative since the gases are moving in the downward direction therefore it becomes minus v dash equal to velocity of rocket with respect to ground it is in the upward direction therefore v plus velocity of gases relative to rocket which is in the downward direction therefore it is minus v naught so therefore minus v dash is equal to v plus minus v naught or we can write it as v dash is equal to v naught minus v let it be equation one so next if alpha is the rate of burning of fuel, then momentum carried by the gases per second is equal to mass of the gases exhausted per second into velocity of gases relative to ground. Mass of the gases exhausted per second is same as rate of burning of fuel, therefore you can write it as alpha and velocity of gases relative to ground is V dash. So therefore, we get alpha into V dash as the momentum carried by gases per second or in unit time. Substituting for V dash from equation 1, you will get so momentum carried by gases per second as alpha into V naught minus V. Let it be equation 2. So now, if M is mass and V is velocity of the rocket at any instant of time, then its momentum is M into V. So now the rate of change of momentum of the rocket can be written as d by dt of mv, let it be equation 3. So now uh, equation 2 is representing momentum carried by gases per second, which is same as the rate of change of momentum of the rocket, that is d by dt of mv. So now according to law of conservation of momentum, equation 2 and 3 are equal, therefore we can write 
d by dt of mv is equal to alpha into v0 minus v. So now d by dt of mv can be written as m into dv by dt plus v into dm by dt equal to alpha into v0 minus v. So now the dm by dt in the second term can be written as minus alpha because dm by dt represents the rate of change of mass of the rocket which is same as the rate of burning of fuel. Since the mass is decreasing, dm by dt is nothing but minus alpha. So therefore we get m into dv by dt minus alpha v is equal to alpha v naught minus alpha v. Here we have minus alpha v on the left hand side and also on the right hand side. If you cancel that, you will get m into dv by dt is equal to alpha into v naught. So let it be equation 4. So now uh, using the chain rule, you can write dv by dt as dv by dm into dm by dt. Again, the dm by dt is minus alpha. So therefore, dv by dt is equal to minus alpha into dv by dm. So now using this in equation 4, we will get minus alpha into m dv by dm is equal to alpha into v0. Alpha and alpha get cancels. And if we cross multiply that, you will get dv as minus v0 into dm by m. On integrating this equation, we will get v is equal to minus v0 into log base e m plus integration constant c. Let it be equation 5. So now, in order to calculate the integration constant c, consider the initial condition. So that is, when v is equal to 0, m is equal to capital M, where capital M represents the initial mass of the rocket, that is before firing. When v is equal to 0, m will be equal to capital M. Substituting this in equation 5, we will get c as v0 into log base e capital M. Now substituting for c in equation 5, we will get v as minus v0 into log base e m plus v0 log base e capital M. So now combining these two terms, you will get v is equal to minus v0 into log of m by m. If we take minus as common, minus v0 as common, log capital M minus log small m. So that can be written as minus v0 into log of log base e capital M by small m. Now suppose vm is the maximum velocity attained by the rocket when all the fuel in the rocket is burnt. And if m0 is the empty mass of the rocket, then the velocity can be written as Vm is equal to minus V0 log base E m by m0. So this equation gives us the maximum velocity attained by the rocket when all the fuel in the rocket is burnt. So this equation is known as single stage rocket equation without gravity. So now to remember two important points. Suppose instantaneous mass m of the rocket this can also be written as m is equal to m minus alpha t, where t is at that instant of time, what is the mass? So small m is equal to capital M minus alpha t. Now, if we substitute in equation 4 and simplify, or else directly you can substitute in equation 6. So there, you will get v as minus v0 into log base e m divided by m minus alpha t. Suppose if the data is given in terms of t, then if the question is like in calculate the instantaneous velocity after some number of seconds in that case you can use this equation and then the thrust on the rocket will be f is equal to alpha into v0 where v0 is uh, the velocity of ga hot gases into alpha is nothing but the rate of burning of fuel the product of these two gives us the thrust acting on the rocket at any instant Moving on to derivation of single stage rocket equation with gravity. Consider a rocket moving along a straight line in presence of gravity. Let m be mass of the rocket and v be its velocity with respect to ground at any instant of time. Let v0 be exhaust velocities of gases with respect to the rocket. If v dash is the velocity of gases with respect to ground, then minus v dash is equal to v plus minus v0. So this is written by following the same logic which we used in uh, deriving the single stage rocket equation without gravity. So therefore this can be written as v dash is equal to v0 minus v. 
So now if alpha is the rate of burning of fuel, then momentum of the exhaust gases per second is equal to alpha into V dash, V dash is V naught minus V, substitute that, you will get momentum of exhaust gases per second equal to alpha into V naught minus V, let it be equation 1. So now the net force acting on the rocket because uh, the rate of change of momentum of the rocket is equal to the force. This force is the resultant of the rate of change of momentum of the rocket that is the rate of change of momentum of the hot gases or the momentum of the hot gases per second minus the gravitational force. Since the gravitational force is pulling the rocket downwards and the momentum of the gases is trying to or reaction produced by the hot gases pushing the rocket upwards. So therefore the net force will be equal to upward force minus the downward force that is downward force is gravitational force upward force is the momentum exerted by gases per second. So therefore you can write it as d by dt of mv is equal to alpha into v naught minus v minus mg or you can write the left hand side as m into dv by dt plus v into dm by dt equal to alpha into v naught minus v minus mg. So this can be written as m into dv by dt, dm by dt is nothing but minus alpha, substituting that you will get minus alpha v which is equal to alpha into v naught minus v minus mg. Again, uh, we have minus alpha v on the left hand side and also on the right hand side, cancelling that you will get m into dv by dt equal to alpha v naught minus mg. So, but in terms of time, the instantaneous mass of the rocket m can be written as capital M minus alpha t. So, therefore, m minus alpha t into dv by dt equal to alpha v naught minus m minus alpha into alpha t into g. Taking that m minus alpha t and dt to the right hand side, you will get dv as alpha v naught into dt by m minus alpha t minus g into dt. Here m minus alpha t and m minus alpha t cancels in the second term. On integrating this equation, we will get v is equal to minus v naught log base e m minus alpha t minus g t plus integration constant c. Again by using the initial condition that is when t is equal to 0, v is equal to 0. Substituting this in equation 2, we will get c as v naught into log base e capital M. Substituting that c in equation 2, we will get v is equal to minus v naught log base e m minus alpha t minus g t plus v naught log base e capital M. So now, simplifying this equation, you will get V as minus V naught log base E M by M minus alpha T minus G T. So this equation is known as single stage rocket equation in presence of gravity. And the thrust acting on the rocket in this case will be alpha V naught minus Mg, the gravitational force of the earth which is pulling the rocket downward. So therefore the net thrust will be alpha v naught minus mg. Hope you have understood everything. Thank you for your patience.